How to make lake pigment with cochineal. In this video I'm going to show you how to make lake pigment with cochineal with the help of my two little assistants. If you like our videos please consider subscribing as it really helps us spread the natural dye word. Hi guys, today I'm going to be making a lake pigment. Um, I am following a recipe from this book, The Art and Science of Natural Dyes. It's a really good resource for any of you wanting um, any books for natural dyeing. And I've been inspired again by Liz Spencer, the dogwood dyer, her subscription, A Year in Natural Dyes, um, and her lake pigment making and painting with pigments. And that is what I'm gonna be doing today. So today I'm gonna to be making a lake pigment with cochineal, which is actually a little bug, and it creates kind of pinks, reds, um, and purples. Um, you can make it with any pigment really or any leftover dye bath and I'm, what you'll need to make a lake pigment is some alum and some soda ash and that will create the reaction to, to make the lake pigment. You also, if you want to change the colour, need a bit of iron powder, pH paper and some coffee filters or anything to filter the liquid through the pigment. So this is cochineal powder. It's a really potent dye stuff. So you could make a dye bath to start with and then use the exhaust <laughs> to make a um, lake pigment. But I'm just going to use it today to, to make it straight out, make a lake pigment. I don't have much powder because it's so potent. I'm just going to make a little dye bath. Add some hot water and then I'll probably heat that for, I don't know, a little while. 15 minutes or something like that. I'm just going to use my love spoon from Alex to stir this. You can see the colour is just really intense. So I've been heating this for a little while. The thing is with cochineal, it's like pretty instant, the color. So, and also I haven't used it that Marie, much. Shall I have the good luck for the rest of her day? Good luck for the rest of her days? Yeah. Awesome. That means I have good luck for the rest of my days too. No, she has good luck for only today. Oh, only today, rest of the day, not the rest of her days. Yeah. Okay, well, that means we all have good luck then, doesn't it? Now I've forgotten what I'm saying, so. I'm going to transfer this into two vessels now, hopefully without spilling it. Um, which is highly unlikely, especially as I'm using a pan without a handle. Also using this pan for safety and if you're using something with a bit more um, that isn't such a fine powder then maybe you'd want to strain it as well. I'm not super experienced at making lake pigments so this is kind of an experiment for me as well. So that's about, well, that one's smaller than that one, so I'm going to put more in this one. And I'm using two vessels because I want to change the colour of one of them. So when you add iron to cochineal, it changes it purple. And I want some purple and some kind of pinky red dye. So I'm going to, oh, I won't fit in there. Oh yeah, take a tiny, tiny bit of iron. Voila, just a tiny, tiny bit. And voila, I'm going to stir it. Gonna hold it up to the light and see if it's it looks so dark. If you look from the top, you can see that it's purple. Amazing. Here I'm adding the alum 
I'm going to do, well, I hope my calculations are right, but I'm going to do half of this in that and half of this in that. So I think that's about a litre-ish. Can I try too? Yeah, do you want to put that, hang on, put, drop it in there. Wow, Voila. what is it going to do? Well, hopefully it's going to bubble up in a minute. Can I try? Let me stir this then. <coughs> Can I stir it? Yeah. Go on then, stir that one. Just keep it with this. Come on this side. There you go. And just keep stirring it for a bit. And I'll Tell do. Me when it's done. Oops. And I'll do the other side. Oh look, so pretty, pretty color. Mhm. Mm it's natural dye in the the. I'm gonna the, pull. It's natural dye in the spoon. Yeah. Next, it's going to be the fun bit. Yes, we go and paint. No, well, you can do a bit of painting afterwards if you want. I'll put a bit on the side for you. Okay. Oh. Actually, well, yeah. What is going to be the fun bit? Well, we're going to add some more powder and I think it's going to bubble up. So I hope I've got enough space in my jars for you, the bubbling are to occur. Are you going to paint? Well, I am going to paint with it eventually, but we need, we're going to make a pigment. You're making paint? Well, kind of, yeah. No, right now we're going to make a pigment, like a lake pigment it's called. The colour? Well, what we're making, it's like going to turn it into like a, a, a gel type stuff and then... Yeah. Well, let's keep Shadi back a little bit. Mix them, then I can mix the other one. Right. Am no, not you, my darling. Am I done mixing? Do you want this? Do you want this ball? Am I done mixing? You are for now. Can I mix the other one? Mummy. No, not with that spoon because we're keeping them separate because there's two different colours. Shadi's going to add her crisps to the mix. I wonder what that will do. So now I am going to add some of my. Um, soda ash which is going to change the pH and apparently there's going to be a huge reaction it's going to bubble up and it will make can I mix it up? Can I mix? I get this in this It means that the bubbles are dissipating. Oh. Why do we need bubbles? Well, the bubbles happen because of the reaction between the two powders that we put in there. Yeah, but why do we need the bubbles? Well, we need them to kind of go, I think, and then it means that it's all dissolved in. And then we leave it to rest for about an hour. One hour? Too yeah. Long. <laughs> oh, wow. And then... <laughs> Ooh, it's almost finished. Yeah, just dip it in a little bit. And take it out just hold the end like that and dip in and then take it out and see what color it goes Hang on. and that looks like pretty much a ph7 to me is that good yeah well that's what it's supposed to be yes we Told did it we did we didn't need to put other, we didn't need to put other things in it. Yeah. Papa, you were right this time. You were right. And Papa. Yeah. I'm going to pour this in now and you can, I hope that it's not going to, this is the soda ash, I hope this isn't going to explode over the top. If it explodes over the top, don't put some in the bin. In the sink. Do you want to give it a stir then? Yeah. Go on, stir it. Woohoo! Oh no! Look, it's gonna go over the top! So, That's so satisfying, isn't it? Yeah. And we want to touch it. <laughs> Can I touch it with my finger? Not right now. I just want to say, I was thinking that my pink wasn't looking pink enough. Or there wasn't much difference between the purple and the, the pinky red. So I added a bit of vinegar into this one. And it has gone more pink. But the other one is better. But we're going to leave it how it was originally anyway. But just so you know that pH, that cochineal is pH sensitive. Mama, look. Gorgeous, Stalin. So these guys have been resting for a bit over an hour and you can see that the um, pigment has settled to the bottom so I'm just going to pour off the excess water and then I'm going to pour the pigment into my coffee filters which are down there 
So then I'm going to let them filter overnight and hopefully they'll dry out over the next couple of days and I'll be able to make a pigment with them. So as accurately as possible, which is pretty hard to see in this light. Oh, there we go. You can see the where it starts to come off. Which isn't going to be much actually. I think I'm going to have to pour pour it straight into the filter. Definitely a two-handed job and I'm not sure this is the best um, setup for filtering. And obviously I've only got one hand available because Madame wants to be carried so let's see what happens. I'm going to do my best to do it as carefully as possible and hopefully it's not going to fall out or I'm not going to drop the glass. Hang on. So, let's pour it in. Oh no! So that was absolutely a two-hand job and I messed it up, of course. Um, I'm not going to try and get that pigment out now because I'm not going to risk my setup. But tomorrow I'll probably, oop, oh no, strain that into another filter and try and get that pigment. Um, and these seem to be working now. You can see the water. Um, the liquid coming out which hasn't got any pigment in it and they will drain overnight and then tomorrow I'll have some pigment. So yesterday I made some lake pigments with cochineal and today they've filtered through and I'm going to show you what they look like. Um, I had a bit of an accident yesterday when I was pouring out the pigments so I'm going to refilter that bit, but first of all, I'm going to take these off and show you the colours that, that I've got and the kind of, it looks almost like a pudding. <laughs> so let's try not to make too much of a mess. I've got, I was trying to get two colours yesterday. I used iron. Oh, look at that to make purple. Oh, where's my spoon? I'm gonna just spread that like that a little bit so it can dry out quicker. And eventually when it's dry, I'm going to scrape it all off and make a powder. So that was the purple. Uh oh, I'm making a mess. That's the purple. And another purple. Like that, and these ones slightly pinker. I think if I wanted them more pink or kind of more reddish, I would have added a little bit of cream of tartar to the original dye bath. So the colours aren't a huge amount different, but they are different, which is what I wanted because I'm going to paint with these at some point. There we go. And it's really satisfying. Look at that. I hope I used the right quantities of everything. I'm pretty sure I did. Anyway. I feel like now, if I was to do it again, I'd probably... Um, I, because I didn't strain the, the cochineal powder. If I was to do it again, I'd probably put the cochineal in a, little, in a little bag or something to keep it kind of separate from the dye bath. So this is what I've got, and I'm hoping that it will work. Well, it is working. So there we go, my two shades of lake pigment, cochineal lake pigment. I'm doing this whilst boobing the babe. So I'm doing it one-handed again, but I'm just going to Try and get my, well actually no, I think that's a two-handed job. So now the job is to scrape all of this pigment off and get it into my pestle and mortar. This is a wooden pestle and mortar, I'm not sure that's the best choice, but it's what I've got at the moment. And I'm doing this one-handed again because somebody needed a boob. So if you have two hands available, that's probably much easier <clears throat> and quicker.
Good job, baby. You're grinding it. Grinding it. Well done. And you see these little jars did come in handy. Oh, that beautiful little pot of pink. So to say that this is satisfying is kind of an understatement. Like having little jars with precious magic inside is just so satisfying. And you can definitely see there's two different colours there. And I feel like I, even though it doesn't look like much powder, I feel like that will go a long, long way. So we'll see you in the next video when I paint something. Thank you for watching today. I really enjoyed this process and having little jars of colour to work with in the future is a very satisfying feeling. As usual, like, comment and subscribe and let me know your favourite things about our videos. See you soon!